Okay, you guys, so we've never done like a how-to video. I feel like my channel's very focused on just finding cool stuff, mainly because that's my passion and that's kind of how I've grown my business. I also <laughs> gave everybody the, the holiday off. And so now I, I am the only one here and we have a ton of orders that have to go out today. So I have a pick list of all of the orders that have to go out today. So you guys, I thought it would be cool to take advantage of this opportunity. I thought it would be cool to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to pack and ship some things that might be a little bit weird or awkward or intimidating. It's also kind of cool to show you guys the things that have sold. There's something very, satisfying about packing something up that you found and that has found a home and then shipping it off to its new home. First things first, we have to go and find all of these things. So let's go. We have a really great item number system in place so that whoever is here is able to find the orders that need to go out. I'm just glad nothing in this section sold because this is all of the large stuff, which is very intimidating. It looks like I'm growing airplane propellers over there in the corner. I'm glad none of those sold. This, you guys, is my crown jewel. And I'll explain more later. Let's see, we're looking for number 5182. Yep. 5406, you guys totally have to remember this one. We just found that like a couple of weeks ago. This is from Angelus. They made all of these really cool little weather stations, which we talked about a couple of videos ago. If you guys didn't see that one, you should go back and check it out. These things sell very quickly. Let's see, 3201 is another one that I showed you guys. Um, Yes, the Papua New Guinea drum. This one's super cool and this just sold, so that should be kind of fun to pack. It's actually a lot smaller than I remember it being. 5244, I think is this guy here. This basket's insane. This is an Inuit Eskimo basket, not the one inside. This one's, this one is from South America. It's a really, really good size. Love that. Number 3437 should be pretty easy. It's from a company called Pindulux. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Pendulux, they're pretty cool. Here it is. They've got like a really cool industrial look to it. This is another Pendulux model. You can't really see the clock, it's covered by the model number, but this one's really cool. 4849, it's a Franklin Mint statue of eagles. Oh, here it is. I feel like I remember this being a lot bigger. <laughs> It's pretty small, that's good. That'll be easy to pack. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And last but not least, we have a Linux tea cup. It's actually an espresso cup. There we go, perfect. All right, you guys, so everything is pulled now and we are going to pack all of this stuff up. Thankfully, it's kind of a slow packing day and everything is actually really gonna be pretty easy, but there's some really great teaching moments here, so I'm excited to show you guys some little tricks that will help anytime you're packing something kind of difficult. It actually makes zero sense, but for whatever reason, if you just start with the easy small stuff and you knock them out really quickly at first, it somehow tricks your brain into thinking like you're gonna be done in no time at all, and uh, it makes the whole day just fly by. Something like this here, uh, I'm gonna start with this because this is super easy. I think this was listed for about 30 minutes and it sold very quickly and I think it sold for around $200. Anyways, I'm gonna get started on packing some of these really simple things and then I'm gonna give you guys some tips on some of the more difficult stuff. I'm a huge fan of these eBay brand boxes just because they're really great sizes. They're about the same sizes as the USPS flat rate boxes, but if you were to ship this USPS flat rate, I think it's like 12 or $13. We can usually ship these for like $8. So it makes sense to buy the shipping supplies as opposed to get them for free and then pay five or six dollars more just to actually use the free supplies. Kind of uh, smart on USPS's part. Then we also use this little number here. We put it on the outside of the box so that we know exactly what's in each box. And then we'll actually wait till the very end to print all of the shipping labels just because it's quicker if you do that all at once instead of breaking it up and doing it 
every time you pack a package. So now I'm gonna actually do a vase like this, just to kind of show you how we pack the paper so that you don't have to overdo it with bubble wrap. You really don't need a lot of anything other than paper to protect something like this, even though it's really breakable. You just wanna make sure you have the right size box so that you have enough space and you wanna use enough paper. So in choosing the right box, this actually is a really great size for something like this. You can test it out just by looking at it and see that you're gonna have enough room for paper all around each edge and it's gonna have plenty of space so that nothing's gonna happen to it. First thing you wanna do is have a really firm layer of paper down at the bottom. That way, if they drop your box from a really high level or you know, if they drop it off the back of a truck, which is not unheard of, everything is gonna be okay. This is the paper we use, it's just flat sheets. Then I'm gonna take off my number and make sure it goes on the box. And I like to put it just right here on the front so it's easy to spot. So around each edge, you wanna pack it in there really tightly. And the last step is you wanna put a layer on the top. You wanna to give yourself like a good three inches there at the top, you see? So that's what's gonna be all of your paper on the top that's gonna to protect it. You wanna have so much paper in there that it's hard to close the box. That's how you know you've used enough. Done. And that looks pretty good. So this one's gonna be kind of interesting. This is a really beautiful Murano art glass bowl, but it's a kind of an awkward size because it's almost, not quite 12 inches wide, and the biggest square box I have for something like this is going to be a 12 by 12 by 12. So I would want to use a little bit of a bigger box than that because I would want to make sure that I have enough space on the sides to put a lot of paper. So I'm going to show you guys a really cool trick if you ever need to make a box into the shape that you need. These are actually really awesome. You can actually get these at U-Haul for super cheap. I think they sell them for like 80 cents each, which is a great deal for a box that's this size. Now this actually makes a really good rectangular shape. We want this to be a square and I need it to be a little bit bigger than a 12 by 12 by 12. And since this is 16 inches, is long that's actually gonna give me an additional couple of inches to make a square box that's the perfect size so on both sides of your box where it's the longest you want to put a mark right here and then on the opposite side right here maybe two inches like that and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side but on the opposite end go two inches and look at that, you guys. I now have a square shaped box that's just a little bit bigger than a 12 by 12 by 12. We're gonna do the same technique and put the paper around each edge so that it's completely nested inside and is not gonna be able to have any movement at all. This would be able to be dropped off a truck and I would be confident about it. This is an original Lewis Comfort Tiffany art glass lamp. This at one point would have had like a mushroom type shade that would have gone on the top and it would have matched this color perfectly. The person that I bought this from told me that the original owner tipped it over, broke the lamp and then just gave it to her. Just gave it to her because she couldn't bear to look at it without the original shade. I would have been absolutely devastated if I would have broken the shade for something like this because these things can go for tens of thousands of dollars. So this actually ended up selling for just under $2,200. So that's a lot of money for just this little lamp base. On the bottom, it's gonna say LC Tiffany, which stands for Lewis Comfort Tiffany. So it says LC Tiffany, Lewis Comfort Tiffany is what that stands for. You can find original art glass wine glasses that are signed this way. You can also find lamp shades. Just the shades can actually be really valuable because people love to use original Tiffany shades on light fixtures. So you might have noticed that I used bubble wrap on that and I didn't use it on any of the other glass stuff. The reality is bubble wrap is really unnecessary about 90% of the time. I know that like a lot of people are like, well, it's going in the mail. You have to cover it in bubble wrap. The bubble wrap doesn't do anything. The paper is what does 
everything. A really cool tip for stemware. This is a foolproof way to always get your stemware exactly where it needs to go without any issues. And we're gonna be using bubble wrap. So our customer ordered two of them, which that's actually a pretty easy amount of glasses to ship. But with this technique, you can actually use this for sets of six, sets of 12. The key is to wrap each one in bubble wrap so that there's no glass exposed because most of the time when a set of glasses breaks during shipping, it's because two pieces of glass touch. That's the worst thing in the world that you can have happen. Once these are wrapped in bubble wrap, we're actually gonna be packing them so that they're touching side by side. The base on these glasses is incredibly strong. So if you nest them like this, then the base is actually gonna protect the other glasses rim by helping give it extra support. It's a foolproof way. For these, I actually use about two sheets of bubble wrap each one. And then we're gonna just kind of wrap it like this so that there's no glass exposed. You can see the bottom is completely covered and the top is completely covered. And we're gonna do the same thing with this one here. You can tape it if you want, or if you pack it really tight with paper like I do. I don't really use tape on the bubble wrap. This is the bottom here, this is the top, and then opposite on this side and they're gonna nest together and we're gonna put them together super, super tightly. In fact, you can even tape these together if you want because that's what's gonna, they're, they're gonna support each other and they're gonna protect each other while they're shipping. We're gonna wanna make sure that there's plenty of space here, plenty of space here, and it looks like we got about an inch, a little bit more on each side, and then there's plenty of room there. And then we're going to pack the edges with paper. So that's pretty good. Now we're gonna do our top layer and they're done. And that's it you guys. You could drop this off the back of the truck and it would be good to go. I can't think of very many situations where it's good to ever hear movement in your package. So if you have something completely packed and you shake it, and there's still movement, you may want to double check that. The pieces on this are actually super heavy. These drawers are made out of really thin wood. Our goal right now is to just secure all of the pieces on the set to make sure that it gets to where it's going as safely as possible. So this is what we're dealing with here. It's a lot of different pieces. And as you can see, the trays already have cracks in the wood just because they're so old and so delicate. So we need to make sure that each one of these tiles is completely secured and not able to move while it's being shipped. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wanna take one of these pieces of paper and my tray. And I'm going to put the paper right on top of the tray Tighten it, this is so weird, I know. Tighten it like this and then flip it, like that. Now it's upside down and the tiles are gonna look like that. We're gonna take this and we're gonna put it back in there. So these are now gonna go in there, but we're gonna keep the paper underneath them. See that, we just slid them right in. We have the tray underneath now. And then you push it down so that they kind of go inside. You don't need all of this paper. This paper is massive, so we're actually gonna trim it. We are going to fold these over, just like that. And now we have a really secure drawer full of these tiles that will go right back in here. And now, the tiles in that drawer will no longer move, which is exactly what we want. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna finish that with all of the other drawers. All right guys, so all of these drawers have been packed properly. Any kind of space that would be between these drawers that would allow the tiles to move and hit the wood has been completely filled in by wrapping them in paper. So now when we shake this, we shouldn't have any movement, which is exactly what we want. This is perfect, so I'm very happy with it. We're actually gonna use a different paper on this, and we're gonna use this paper here, which I like to use this for heavier items because it gives a little bit more support. So we're gonna do the same thing that we were doing 
with that paper earlier, only we're gonna be using this paper. What happens with this paper, if you use this with heavier items, is it tends to flatten on the bottom, which creates room in your box while it's being shipped, and then things move around and that's the last thing you want. So you do wanna also have another option of paper that's a little bit heavier duty for your heavier items or your larger items. This is the heavier duty paper. And then we'll do like another few inches on the top and this guy's good to go. You guys, this one is packed to the gills with paper. That is what I like to see. No movement, no rattling, no shaking. Oh, what a day, what a day, what a day, what a day. What a day, 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 what a day. I'm exhausted, but uh, I really wanna thank you guys for coming and hanging out with me because that made the day go by so much faster. Now I have to go through and print all of the labels for these so that FedEx and USPS can come and pick them up. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. This was so much fun. If you guys have any other questions about packing or shipping or any of that kind of stuff, leave them in the comment section below and then maybe I can answer some additional questions that I wasn't able to cover in this video. If you have any additional tips for packing and shipping that might be helpful for other viewers, Make sure you leave those in the comments below too. Any advice or tips that you might have on packing or shipping, I would even love to hear those. So leave those in the comment section below. This was actually kind of fun. I'm exhausted, but it was fun. If you guys haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do it now so you don't miss future episodes. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.